He sees. Our Heavenly Father sees all things. You know, there's a Greek word used in this that is broken up into kind of three parts. Blipo means to perceive as you see. Adu means to simply see. But then, then we have um, optomahi, which means to see with a solid gaze, with eyes wide open. This is where our word optometrist comes from. And it is utilized basically... Father knows what's going on. Many people, they kind of tire of praying and because they think God doesn't hear them. He always hears you, but He not only hears, He sees. He sees everything that goes on. He has heard His children crying recently. And oppression was being brought upon the migrations of the people whereby we have gained freedom and liberty. And that was beginning to wane away. And we had... Uh, Certainly, pressures taking over. And God reached down and touched the hearts of millions. Don't ever forget to thank Him for that. Not the people. You can be proud of them, but thank your Heavenly Father. For He sees and He understands. He always comes down for His children. Open your Bibles, if you would, to the great book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 3, verse 7. Verse 7 reads, And the Lord said, he's speaking to Moses here, okay, giving them, him the commandments and so forth. And the Lord said, I have surely seen. There's the word. I have surely seen. Not maybe, not perhaps. I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. God knows what you're dealing with. God knows the hearts and minds of the people. I thank God that He leads us, that He guides us, that He directs us. Verse 8, And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land into a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. Well, why would God put them into a mess like that? Uh, because we can cut it. That's why. We can take care of whatever God brings against us. Why? Because our angel always has the face of God to take care of business. And he sees. And so it is with this great nation that was the superpower of superpowers in this end generation. Our Father leads. He protects. Because there is a destiny that must be fulfilled, and it is called the Word of God. So, the, these the tribes don't matter. We can cut it. We can take care of them. Verse 9, Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come up unto me. And I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Verse 10, Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, and thou mightest that thou mightest bring forth my, pe my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. When God is ready, He picks, He sends, He uses His election. I don't know, are you busy? Got too much going on for yourself? Or have you got time for our Father? Verse 11, And Moses said unto God, Who am I? that I should go into Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt. Uh, how can I possibly do that? Well, he wasn't. God's going to take over. It'll be fine. Twelve. And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God upon this mountain. And naturally, he would. There'd be a lot that wouldn't. Why? Our people have a way of letting self get in the way many times. Uh, Thirteen, and Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The God of my fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Don't ever forget this. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. 
And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. This is why that Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, could say, I am the vine. It's why he could say, I am the way. It's why he could say, I am the living water, because there is no other. He is our Heavenly Father, Emmanuel, God with us. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thou shalt... Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Well, what's that? His name. Do you ever use it? It's important. When you take Ea, Asha, Ea, which is I am that I am in the Hebrew, and you break it back to that etymology, back to the consonants, you come up with Yahweh, that being the sacred name. Verse 16, Go and gather the elders of Israel together, and say unto them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and Jacob, appeared unto me, saying, I have surely visited you, and seen that which is done to you in Egypt. And even today, as our Father blesses the people, He knows, He sees, He leads, He directs. Don't ever, ever forget to thank Him. I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt and into the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. And naturally, the land of the Jebusites would be to their main city, Jebus, which would later be called Yarushalam, which was God's favorite spot, not only on the earth, but the universe. Uh, 18, And they shall hearken to thy voice, and thou shalt, and, and thou shalt come, thou and the elders of Israel, unto the king of Egypt, and you shall say unto him, The Lord God of the Hebrews hath met with us, and now let us go, we beseech thee, three days' journey unto the wilderness that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. So, there it is. Our Father does see. He knows. He understands. And our Father certainly prevails. He is wonderful. He's our Savior, Father, Creator, and there's nothing you can say that can properly describe all that He's done for us. Why? He loves you. And He loves His children so very much and sees to them. Now let's go to the New Testament, book of Acts. <clears throat> Acts chapter 7 is where we want to go. Acts chapter 7, Stephen's being delivered up, been given a pretty rough time, but um, he makes it all right. Why? God is with him. When God chooses his servants, never worry, never fear. It's all going to be fine. Why? God's on the throne. Verse 30, And when forty years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush. 31, and when Moses saw it, he wondered at the sight, and as he drew near to behold it, the voice of the Lord came unto him, saying, what, 32, I am the God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, the God of, uh, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Then Moses trembled and does not behold. Verse 33, then said the Lord to him, put off thy shoes. From thy feet, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. And so it was. You know, always show respect to our Heavenly Father. If you don't, you'll pay for it. Because He expects the very best from you. And, and so if, if He's going to use you, there are some people He just can't use. Sorry, but that's the way it is. Verse 34, I have seen. There's our word. That's the key word, the word seen. God sees. 
wide open, gazing, perception. He knows, I have seen, two times for emphasis, the affliction of my people, which is in Egypt, and I have heard their groaning, and am come down to deliver them. And now come, I will send thee unto into Egypt. Our, there are certain things that bring our Father down. It's when people try to, pr- to provide their own salvation other than depending on Him, or when somebody oppresses His children, when somebody hankies with His design works. It will bring Him down. You can count on it. And you have witnessed that, whether you realize it or not, in this very month that we are now dwelling, whereby He eases some oppression from off our backs, uh, and how precious it is. 35, This Moses whom thou, they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge? The same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. Uh, God did pick that Moses. He brought them out after that he had showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness forty years. It's kind of hard to visualize, it always has been for me, how they could go bad when they had witnessed the parting of the Red Sea, being fed in the wilderness, and seeing that pillar of fire by night and the cloud by day to protect them, how they could fall away. But they certainly did. But the promise was in the 37th verse. Listen to it. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me him shall you hear. In other words, he's chosen of God, will lead by our Heavenly Father. Do you know who that was? He's quoting from the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. That's who he's talking about. He is the prophet. He walked the earth just like Moses. Moses was a deliverer that brought our children out of that captivity at the hand of God. But today we have that Lord Jesus Christ, who is that prophet that God sent, and that we are to listen to, to know, to understand, and to follow, follow in His way. For He can say, I am the way. I am the bread of life. I am the living water. And as far as salvation is concerned, when you take um, the name Jesus back to the original Yeshua, it means Yahweh's Savior. There's no other Savior. You need, look, you need not look anywhere else under any other law or anything else. He is our Savior, one and all, all in one. And He sees you. He hears you. He loves you. Do you return that to Him with dividends? Do you serve Him? Or are you on a little mission all of your own, as some people are? It does happen. You want to be real careful. There is an ultimate mission, and it is the mission of God, Almighty God. He sent this one. And in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15, you will find that promise. It is beautiful. 38. This is He that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to Him. In, Mount si- in the Mount Sinai, and with our fathers who received the li- lively oracles to give unto us. Those oracles that guide us, that direct us, that keep us off the rocks, that keep us out of harm's way, but most of all that brings God's blessings and leadership. God will not touch that that will not follow. God does not touch those that do not know the shepherd. Why? Because they're, they're ones of free will, then they must make their own minds up. Uh, but God's elect. He does direct. He does guide. And that's how it is. 39. To whom our fathers would not obey, but thrust him from them, and in their hearts turned back again to Egypt. They wanted to go back to a sure thing. How, what is faith? And how can we know God is going to keep his word? Well, that's a sad state of affairs, and unfortunately, we have a lot of that today. God has spoken, it is written, and it shall go down exactly as it's written. 
we are com- approaching that benchmark in time when it's about to reach that point that he will utilize his children. He will protect them. He will free them. They will always, we will always uh, own our gates. We will always control our gates. It is written. It is prophecy. Do we do that on our own? Of course not. God gives us the ability and the power. And I thank our Heavenly Father that He has given us a platform that goes into almost every city in this nation and that, that God's Word has had a part in bringing to pass the great victory that we have experienced with God coming down to His children. I thank Him for that, that we as a family have brought that to pass, assisted in bringing it to pass. God brought it to pass. Why? He sees His children. He sees the pain that they're in. He sees many things, uh, uh, people trying to bring Sharia law and other things right into our own states. It's a disgrace when He set us up as a free nation. So we're moving into that time where destiny is going to abound. God is going, as He has come down and touched the hearts of millions, He's not going to leave us nor forsake us. Verse 40, to complete our reading here. Saying unto Aaron, Make us gods to go before us, for as for this Moses which brought us out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what has become of him. And, and after seeing all those beautiful miracles... They turn to their own lust in worshiping a golden calf while Moses is up on the mountain receiving the commandments of the living God. But then God would shake down one generation, and then they entered that land. So be prepared and know our Father is still on the throne. He works through that Son. That's why He sent the Son. And the Son also sees. He sees and He understands. He leads and He also directs. And so it is. Turn with me, if you would, now to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. And we're going to pick it up with verse 1. Verse 1 reads, Take heed that you do not your alms before men. To be seen, there's our word. I, I want to be seen. To be seen of them, otherwise you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Do you know what alms are? It is the human or divine uh, guidance and compassion of Almighty God. If you don't have that, you're in a heap of hurt. You, You know, I can tell you who God's elect are by seeing compassion. Well, I'd like to be compassion, but it, it uh, kind of goes against my grain. It kind of, I really don't have time for it. I'd rather pick my own time to be compassionate. Oh, what if somebody's in trouble? What if one of the sheep is hurting? You see, God knows and God is watching. So, what is your reward? Well, you guess, too. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, when, you're, when, when you are coming forth with your divine um, courage and, and you are being courageous as as well as uh, blessing God, showing compassion. That divine compassion is a fantastic thing. It never goes away and it never weakens. You've always got time for it. Or you can't serve God. Period. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before them as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their own reward. Self-righteous hypocrites. Holy Joes. Okay? You know, 
Well, but you don't understand, brother. Oh, yes, I do. Compassion, and especially divine compassion, is a beautiful thing. We've had to practice that for many years. Uh, you know, it would be real nice to say this ministry has grown to where it goes around the world and we have done it. We haven't. But we have enough compassion to know where it did come from. It came from Him. Because there is no way on this earth that this person or anyone else could have built a ministry that has the influence this one does without God being on the throne. Divine compassion, giving your alms. Do you know what that is? It's righteousness. You got any clothing in the, in the hereafter or are you naked? Three, and when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. Uh, Four, that thine alms may be in secret, and that thy Father which seeth, there's your word, which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. That's why we're such a success, is that we take the word and we send it out, and we teach that word of God with God's own direction and guidance, how precious it is to be able to share that openly, freely, and and with, um, with divine compassion on all those whomsoever will. Verse 5, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners or the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. That's all they're going to get. Verse 6, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father shall seeth, he's looking, shall seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. That's what success and and, uh, completeness Complete, divine completeness is, is the guidance of Almighty God. Don't ever shirk from that. We're living in a crucial time. It's a time of testing. We're coming up to another uh, mark. You want to be very alert. Seven, but when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. You know, that, that doesn't cut it. Whether your heart is real or not, that's what mount, amounts to. Don't chatter, because when you chatter, your flesh gets into it. It's not good. Eight, be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask. Anytime you think your prayers aren't being answered... You think God isn't guiding you? Remember that verse we just read. God knows what you have need of before you ever ask. Why? He seeth. He observes. He knows. He takes note. It's important for God to be able to trust you, to know you, to be able to depend upon you. That's what's ever so very important. You know, no man is judge. This man is not a judge, and you're not a judge. We have one judge. That's our Father. May he be the judge. Verse 9, After this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Do you notice who's being put first here? It's important. You know, really, you ought to notice. It's not man. It's God. God is being put forth, and he, the first three petitions are to him. Then comes man. Man always comes second. Always put your heavenly Father first or suffer for it. That's the way it goes. Eleven, give us this day our daily bread. And, and our Father does. You know, our people are blessed. They truly are. And what is that bread? Well, it's God's Word. It's the bread of truth. God will always send teachers and people that study and bring forth that word and share that bread. He is the bread of life. And He is there for the taking, the understanding, and the blessings. 
And forgive us our debts. That's your sins. Forgive us our sins as we forgive our debtors, the ones that would sin against you. 13. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil and evil people. For thine is the kingdom. That's the king and his dominion. And the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so it is. You can say amen to that. Our Father is so wonderful. Now, how is it? A lot, so many people say, well, I'd really like to know how to pray. Well, that's not Christ's prayer. He's telling you how to pray there. Always put your Father first and then ask in Christ's name. And he will hear you. He will more than hear you. He will see you. And that's what's important. 14, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will forgive you. 15, but if, here's a big word, but if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses, you're cut off. 16, moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites, of a sad countenance. But you don't understand, I'm so holy. For they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. You know, you have to be humble before Almighty God. Not a self-righteous hypocrite. He can't handle that. Doesn't like it. Won't bless it. Be humble. Approach Him. Talk to Him. Let him know you love him, for he indeed loves you. That's why he blesses all of us. That's why we are a success. Not because we're a failure, but because we love him and he blesses us tooth and nail. How precious it is. 17. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face. 18. That thou appear not unto men to fast but unto thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth, there you have it again, seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. How precious it is that our Father knows his children. Do you know something? That's not unusual. You know why? He made you different than anyone else, so he can certainly identify you. Your DNA is different. Your fingerprints are different. You know something? He wanted someone just like you, but he wanted you to love him. And through all the scripture, you know what brings him down? Because he loves his children. What brings him down when we hurt, when we're being oppressed? His love for us. It's not asking too much for you to love him and the family. Don't isolate yourself. Love him and the family. And serve Him. And be blessed. Otherwise, the condition is not good. I'm not the judge. He is. He seeth. He knows. He's the one that dishes out blessings on leadership, on success. Do it humbly. And give Him the credit for all things good that come from us. Knowing we've got a long ways to go. And our Father leads, guides, and directs. It's time to move into another land, another phase. And that leadership is, you'll find him written in Deuteronomy 15, verse 18. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. He's there for you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Why? Again, it may be hard for some to understand, but he loves you. He may not love what you do all the time, but He does love you regardless. And He can use you if you love Him in return. And you look. He is the bread. Do you help Him? Do you help? You know, did Christ feed the multitude? No, He gave it to the disciples and they fed the bread. Do you? The living water, do you give people a sup or do you stand in their way? You've got to be a little generous in this and loving. It's family. You want to remember that. Our Father loves His children, okay, when they love Him. Okay, Luke, to complete this lecture, 
the great book of Luke. We're going to go to chapter 17. We're going here to document that Christ also sees. Luke 17, let's pick it up with verse 11. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem, that's the old barometer of the world, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. I mean, we were out in the country here. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers which stood afar off. In other words, they were not allowed to come close because leprosy is very contagious. But they saw him. Now, the important thing is, you're going to find in the next verse or so, Christ saw them. That word saw is the reason we're here. Because when he saw them, with eyes wide open, he gazed, he knew, he perceived. He teaches a great lesson in doing that. Uh, 13, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, uh, Master, have mercy on us. They were crying out for help. There they were diseased with an uncurable disease, unless Christ so decided. Verse 14, and when he saw them, that's your cue, saw, the word saw. When he saw them, because he does see, he sees when you're in trouble. He sees when you cry for mercy. Don't you ever doubt it. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Now, now listen to me closely. Why would Christ say, Go show yourself to a priest? Well, that was the way, supposedly, that they healed leprosy. You took two little birds. I'm going to shorten it, but we're going to go through it. You took two little birds, and one you killed, and put the blood of it on the other, and then turned the other one loose. This one that stood before them would soon shed his blood on the cross. And then he would be freed to the right hand of Almighty God. And it was he that was the real healer, cleanser. He that could make this come to pass. And that's why he sent them to the priest. But, beloved, watch people. It isn't that you're to judge them, but watch them. Be real careful. Listen to this. Verse 15. And one, well, now wait, there were ten. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. And with a loud voice glorified God. Well, that's not too good an average one out of ten. But, I mean, here, he cleansed them, and nine of them are paddling off. They didn't even say, thank you. Okay. And that's fine. But what did this one do? This one gave thanks and glorified God. Let me tell you something. It is not necessary to thank man. But you always want to thank God, because He uses men and women and children to accomplish deeds. You don't necessarily have to thank them, but thank God that sent them. Thank God that uses them. Thank God Himself for touching. What happens here? It's important that you know. This one, with a loud voice, glorified God. He took time out of this moment. Instead of being so overjoyed, took time to give thanks. And he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. That, that, um, that uh, verse 17, And Jesus answering said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? 
Now, let me ask you a question. How long do you think the cleansing will last on those nine? Hmm? He won't have to bring it back upon them. They haven't learned their lesson. They're taking too much for granted. They did not give credit to he who saw them. That's to say the Lord Jesus Christ. When he touched their hearts and their bodies and healed them, they should have given thanks. Now, this one did. And do you know something? You're going to find out in the next verse he wasn't even an Israelite. He was a stranger. Do you know what that word stranger is in the Greek? It's alo, means different, other, genesis, race. He was of another people. That he saw fit to give thanks to Almighty God through the Son for the event that transpired. He was healed. But what about the nine? Well, that's a big question. And that's something you want to think about and give a lot of thought to. Well, they must have, you know, they also were crying out to Jesus. They knew who he was. They knew he could do it. So they must have been in part Christian or thought they were. But what happened? Well, I don't have to explain it. I'm sure you know when Jesus would say, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? You could use a number with that if you wanted to. Nine. Eighteen. They are not there, are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger, Alleginius. I mean, he was of another race even. But You see, God uses whomever He chooses that is humble before Him, that gives thanks, that has time, that shows compassion instead of self-righteousness. It's so important, beloved. Verse 19, And He said unto him, Arise and go thy way. What is it? Thy faith hath made thee whole. What about the rest? Well, where was their faith? You don't know, do you? Well, he does, and that's what's important, you see. But this one was gracious enough and humble enough that he turned back and gave that thanks. God saw. God has seen. And God still looks. Why? You're in a critical time, beloved. God is choosing. And God knows who he can use and who he can't. And certainly, that's pretty obvious, that God uses whomever He will. Here, He used somebody that wasn't certainly um, of the same people. But that person showed love and respect for the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't ever want to drift away from our Heavenly Father. You know something? He loves you so very much. He proved it the first of this month. That He loves our people. That He loves our nation. And that He would lead, guide, and direct. That He will clean things. Have you given Him thanks for it? Don't forget to if you haven't. Because He's waiting. He's listening. Heavenly Father, thank You, Father, for the written Word. Thank You, Father, for caring for the children. Thank you, Father. We love you so much, and we do thank you, Father, for touching our nation and the people. We thank you for giving us this platform that we may help steer and guide, Father, and with your blessings. We thank you in advance for any future that you might need and utilize this group, Father. Touch. We know the destiny comes. Bless. We ask it in Yeshua, Jesus' precious name. Amen. The Mark of the Beast.